As believers in God, we are graced with the opportunity to be the hands and feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Family, we have been receiving many requests from people on how to get involved in the Beauty for Ashes campaign. Here are some ways that you can help fight gender-based violence in South Africa. You can sponsor items for the CRC case crates, mobilize your home cell or structures to get involved, assist with the packing and the distribution, encourage and open doors to corporate companies that want to make a difference, and many more. Join us as we uplift the women and children affected by GBV in our communities. For more information on how you can get involved, get in touch with your zone pastor or visit our website at crcchurch.com. Family, CRC is continuing to take more territory for Jesus Christ right behind me. We are so excited to be opening on the 10th of April with Pastor at our brand new auditorium. It's going to be seating 3,000 people. We have a state-of-the-art uh, chapel. We have kids' church, mother's room, youth center, and a whole admin block. Wherever you are, Kimberley or in the greater Northern Cape area, maybe you live on a farm, I want to encourage you, be a part of what God is doing right here in our city and in our province. God bless. many events and so much information to share, it could get difficult to keep up. The good news is that you can stay up to date with all things CRC by visiting our website. From information about service times to amazing sermons by Pastor Ad, you can get it all in one place. For more information, visit our website at crcchurch.com. Baptisms are here, family. Join us for a mass water baptism on the 3rd of March. Remember to bring a towel and dry clothes to change it after you get baptized. Also, please make sure to bring the appropriate dress code with dark clothes that are non-see-through. For more information, please visit crcchurch.com. Thank you for tuning into our live broadcast with Pastor Ad Vosov. You are going to be blessed out of your socks. Most definitely, TD. Now, I don't know about you, but we love praising the Lord. And so it's about that time. Let's jump to our feet. Good evening, CRC. Come on, let's all stand together.
together and fix our eyes on Jesus tonight as we lift him up. Hey! Are you ready to praise the Lord tonight, church? Let's go! I give you my attention, all my focus, pushing out the limits in this moment. I feel your spirit moving all around me. Come and have your way. I'm looking at the troubles, you're reviving. This faith inside of my soul, you're igniting. You're calling me to levels that are higher. I can see your face. Lord, I believe you are greater than the world I see. 
you for meeting my need. Lord, I got to praise you for healing me. Yeah. Lord, I got to praise you for loving me. Lord, I got to praise you. Lord, I got to praise you. before you with an expectant heart. We know that you are the miracle worker. We know that you do all things that are impossible. Tonight, we cast off every distraction. It's in the, it's in the still small voice in the raging storm when I fall down Fall down to my knees And it's when I lift my voice When my hands are raised In the secret place And still I see You are always waiting To To your presence, mighty King Every moment you are there With the heavens we will sing You are holy just as we are Come before you and bow down We adore you, majesty We will sing, you are worthy. Oh, you are all 
Come on, you. Come on, lift your hands tonight. Come on, this is the generation that will change this world. Come on. All over South Africa, lift your hands. Come on, come on. Fall like rain. Come on, that is our cry. Come, Holy Spirit. Come on, if you're hungry tonight, God is going to touch you. He promised. All the earth will be filled with His glory. Come on. Come on, fall like rain. Lift your hands with me tonight. Just lift your hands all over South Africa. Watching on Faith TV, Praise TV, Facebook Live, YouTube, CLC Line, all our platforms. The presence of God is yeah. We've not come seeking a man, we've come seeking him. That name that is above every other name. And we lift our eyes, Father, tonight from every distraction. We put our eyes upon you as a people hungry and desperate. Knowing, God, there are things only you can do. Knowing, God, we are lost without you. Our nation, our world is in a state of barrenness and turmoil without your presence. But you promised it shall come to pass in the last days that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh upon our sons and our daughters. And Father, tonight there are tens of thousands gathered in our buildings, united, hundreds of thousands watching on television. We stand united before you tonight with hearts that are hungry. Father, we humble ourselves before you and we say you are God and you are God alone. And we ask you, Father, for our nation, this critical time that you will fall like rain that you will visit our country, that you will fall upon our universities, our schools, our campuses, that those who are lost will be saved, the prodigals will return. We pray that you will move by your spirit as you promised, that the days of the early church will be restored, Father, for you said the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. So we stand before you, Father, with hearts filled with expectation knowing that you are alive father knowing that your spirit is moving knowing father that you are brooding upon the earth that even in the midst of chaos and darkness something good is about to happen so we stand before you tonight in spite of the dearth and the barrenness in spite of brokenness and heartache we stand before you tonight and we lift our eyes to the heavens for our help comes from you god and we say fall like rain father fall like rain Fall like rain upon us, fall like rain upon our homes, our families, our churches across this country. In every home, people watching, I pray, Holy Spirit, that your presence will become tangible. That you will remove sickness and disease from the midst of your people. That you will cause chains of bondage to be broken and to fall off of people. Addictions will be broken tonight and the name of Jesus will be glorified. So Father, we present ourselves before you tonight and we say, Yeah, we are, Lord, touch us. Yeah, we are, Lord, anoint us. Yeah, we are, Father, you've appointed us. We are ready to be world changers and history makers. So use us, Father. Baptize us afresh in the Holy Ghost and fire. In the name of Jesus, come on. If you are ready for God's reign and ready for heaven's assignment, give the Lord a mighty praise, you wonderful young champions of God. Come on. Oh, you can do better than that. This is not Sunday morning. This is Sunday night. It is the youth service for everybody under the age of 85. 
Hallelujah. I'm so glad you came because you're never going to be the same again in Jesus' name. Give two or three people a high five and say, your life will never be the same again. Afrikaans, jullie hebben ons nooit weer die selle wees nie. Baie welkom, Ali Kerka, Johannesburg, Bloemverdijn. Come on, welcome them from Pretoria. You know, this is a miracle. We have tens of thousands of people part of this service. Last Sunday night, we had over 2,000 students getting saved. Come on, that is a miracle. 2,000 students and tonight, hundreds and hundreds are going to get saved. I know we have 500 first-time visitors in Cape Town. In all the churches where we have campuses, we are very intentional because you are the hope. You are the now and you are the future. So, amen. Welcome. Come on, let's keep on welcoming people. Lady Brand Belito, Cape Town, Cape Town North, East London, False Bay George, Jeffreys Bay, Katu, Kimberley, Clarksdorp, Kroenstad, Marking, Malmesbury, Malmesbury, Nelspray, Nelspray, uh, Bolaquani, Port Elizabeth, Potchefstroom, Abington, Val, Welcome, Wooster, Tumek, Ondevier, Dig, Ongediva, Sokopment, in Ventuk, Praise the Yenna, come on, man, praise God of his spot, God is good. The devil is under your foot. Ek sê die duivel is onder jou voete. Jy het rede om te jubel en jy vanavond. In English that means you have reason to rejoice tonight in Jesus name. God bless you. Um, we have one of the great uh, pastors in South Africa here with us tonight. Uh, Dr. Lemmer, Pastor Lemmer. He's been in the ministry almost 60 years. It's an honor to have you here. We celebrate you. Thank you for um, being a great man of God. We honor you. You know, the longevity is everything. And it's people like you that I honor. I've only done this 37 years, so I've got some catching up to do. So thank you for being faithful to the call of God and being all over South Africa and touching many lives. Um, you know, we talk about one day we'll get our reward in heaven, but part of our reward is seeing all the beautiful lives change. So we honor you. Come on, give the Lord a praise for you tonight. Come on. And then Pastor Glenn is here. Come up here quickly, Glenn. Quick, 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 quick. While you're on television, I want the people to know where you are meeting next week for the first time. So tell the people, quick. Well, it's such an honor to be again in Pretoria. It's so phenomenal to just to be here, to be the presence of God here. We've come hungry tonight. CRC Durban is moving into a new location. Um, the Olive Convention Center next week. And so please invite all your friends, tell them, anybody you know in Durban and the surrounding, to join us in the Olive Convention Center. Okay, you see, don't give a pastor a microphone, he wants to preach. Tell them where it is. 81 Somsetso Road in Durban, right near um, uh, Moses Mabida Stadium. You can't miss it. It's the old ice rink. It's going to be full up next week. So please invite all your friends. Amen. Eight awesome van aankondigen. Take your seat. How have you been doing reaching your world? Amen. Anybody shared their faith this last week? Let me see. Amen. And the rest of you are, are, are getting ready, right? To share your faith, to invite your friends. Um, I want to start, it's a little bit tragic, but I want to start with two things. Two stories, real stories that happened in the last week. And if you are here tonight and it affects you, I, my heart is broken for you. About two weeks ago, a lady contacted us from Port Elizabeth on social media and said, I want to come to a CRC church. We sent that name down to Pastor Keegan and them, and thank God they followed her up, and they had her in a home cell on Wednesday night. And she was 70 years old, not a young girl. Gave her life to the Lord. That next morning, she got stabbed 70 times for a cell phone. Never knew what was heading away, but God did. You never know what's heading your way, but God does. And I'm not meaning to put fear upon you. I want to talk about the things that matter. Because I've been talking about it for the last few weeks. And some of you are still not getting it. Because you think your friends will live forever. And they will not. Death comes like a thief in the night. Pastor Jack this last week had to go through all the night vigils. Because one of the directors in our church, sitting in Pretoria, in a restaurant, in daylight, having a meal with somebody else, somebody walked into that restaurant with a knife, stabbed him once in the neck, dead. Today I come back from Johannesburg, 
And there was a major accident on the N14. People had to be lifted. I don't know how many of them died, but I know that there are some who died. I think sometimes when a preacher is passionate about talking about lost people, they want to label you and say that's his thing. No, it's not. I've stood at too many deathbeds to realize how final death is. I've done this too long to realize that death comes without invitation. That your friend at university tomorrow may not live another day. I mean, I was a reckless young person. If I have to think back of the things that happened in my life before I got saved, I thank God that He protected me. A man that put a gun in my belly, pulled the trigger, the gun never went off. Then he took the same revolver, pointed at my friend, because we were naughty. Gate crashed a party, and I don't want to say what we did. And he took that revolver and shot. And I still shouted to my friend. I said, Buta, hei te gewehr. And Buta attack is hei gepak. He ran, like in the army. Dashed down, roll, crawl, observe, side fire. He dashed like this. And the guy shot five times. Bam, 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 bam. Never hit him. The times I was reckless in many, many ways before I got saved. Places I were. You know, after I got saved, I wasn't one of those rejoicing Christians. I was in shock. You better listen to me. I was in shock because I just made it. I made it by the skin of my teeth and skin uh, teeth has no skin. I just made it. And some of you just made it. And you forgot what God did for you. You forgot the treasure that you carry. You forget that you are the hope of this world. You forget that you have a message that people have to hear. You forget that you, oh, come on, man. You forget that you are the one that we should be standing between the living and the dead. That we are not here to play Christian games. We are not here to be Christian consumers. We are here to be trained by God, to be mobilized by God, to go into our world and to change our world. I sat with some of the top police officials. It's amazing where they persecuted me and tried to arrest me in Johannesburg during COVID because we were not bowed to certain regulations and we did things safe. I want to say today we had 242 of the top police officials in South Africa from 42 police stations. And uh, what a great privilege to be able to preach the gospel to them. Many of them got saved, etc., etc. But we spoke about crime in South Africa afterwards. And we both agree that the top general, that crime is a moral issue. We can all sit on the sidelines and criticize, or we can engage. And we can make this world a better place. Somebody told me about Jesus and that took me out of a path of destruction. Where would I be if some, nobody told me? And I say this to you and you're becoming desensitized. You're not listening to me until somebody close to you dies, until your uncle dies or your mother dies or your father dies and you are shocked to reality and you have to ask the question, where is this person? Because you can stand in that grave and you can act all religious and say she was a good person, but good doesn't get you to heaven. In John chapter 3, Jesus made it very clear. He said, you must be born again. So we owe it to our friends, to our relatives, to our children, to share our faith with them. Can you say amen tonight? We owe it. If we say that we love our friends, we owe it to our friends to tell them about Jesus Christ. Come on. If your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you know it, I want you to stand to your feet and give the Lord a celebration of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, praise Him if you know you are safe. Praise Him if you know that you are washed in the blood. I think um, when we are saved for a long time, we forget. But, but how many of you just made it? Now, some of you know what I'm talking about. How I many of you were in an accident and you just made it? You're in a reckless situation, you just made it. There are people lost tonight. So I want to talk for a couple of hours tonight on the lost sheep and the lost coin. What matters to God? I talk to pastors all the time and they say, well, Ut, you're an evangelist, so you have a soul winning church. I spoke to somebody in gym this week. He said, Pastor, I visited your church. Um, it's a soul winning church, but I prefer a teaching church. I said, I'm okay with that. 
As long as you get taught to fulfill the Great Commission. Because God's not interested in your spiritual intellect. God is interested in what you do for His kingdom. Say Amen tonight in Jesus' name. So the Bible says in verse 1, Many dishonest tax collectors and other notorious sinners. How many of you like sinners? Come on. No, some of you are too churchified, okay? That's why I don't dress like a pastor. And I, I actually don't want people to know I'm a pastor. Um, I've, many times people go and say, we're looking for the pastor. Then I, I did a Jesus thing. I said, I am he. And they never felt like they fell before Jesus because it was like, huh? No, we're looking for the pastor, which should be packaged in what? So many dishonest tax collectors and other notorious sinners often gathered around to listen as Jesus taught the people. This raised concerns among the Jewish religious leaders and experts of the law, indignant. They grumbled and complained, saying, look at how this man associates with all these notorious sinners and welcomes them all to him. <laughs> I want to tell you, there's no sin that keeps you away from God. There's nothing you can do that will make God stop loving you. Your dirt and the stench and the stain of sin will not separate you from the love God has for you. Jesus came into this world to reconcile you back to God. And our assignment, I'm getting ahead of myself, is the same. We are yet to reconcile our world back to God to go after that chief sinner, to go after that notorious boy on the campus, to reach those that are the, are the most radical, those that people have written off, those who people say, I'm a whip me. I'll tell you, God is going to turn sinners around. God is going to save chief sinners and they are going to preach the gospel. Even corrupt politicians are going to get saved and pay back the money and they are going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. In Jesus' name. In response, Jesus gave them this illustration. He says, There once was a shepherd with a hundred lambs, but one of his lambs wandered away and was lost. And I've been a pastor 37 years. I've been saved 41 years, and I never forgot, forget what it feels like to be lost. Every time I give an altar call, I give an altar call to myself. It's like I get saved again. Not that I need to be saved again. But I remember how I got saved. I remember I was lost. The minute we stop remembering that we were lost, we become entitled. And we become consumers. And we begin to live for what we can get. And we don't live with our assignment, which is to share the hope that we received while we were lost. So this man has a hundred sheep. One goes lost. He leaves the 99 lambs out in the open field and he searched in the wilderness for that one lost lamb he didn't stop he didn't stop he didn't write the lamb off he didn't talk about the lamb that was lost he didn't stop until he finally found it and with exuberant joy he raised it up placed it on his shoulders he never flogged the person back to church he picked him up out of the miry clay. He went to the club where he's losing himself and he lifted him up. He didn't judge him. He didn't condemn him. He raised him up and he brought him back to the fold. Come on. Some of you have to get off your high horse, off your piety, and you have to go back to your friends and stop talking about that girl. Stop talking about the one who lost herself and make up your mind to pray for that person and go after that soul because one person lost is one too many. Say amen in Jesus' name. You are not the judge. So stop talking about your sister. Pray for your sister. Go seek your sister. Go find your sister. Go bring the prodigal back. He didn't stop until he finally found it with exuberant joy. He raised it up. You know when people are backslidden, they don't feel good about it. How many of you know you can't enjoy a life of sin any longer? Just wave at me. I, I, okay, you don't know what I'm talking about, right? Before you got saved, it bothered you. But now that you are saved, you can't live a life of sin, can you? You lose your joy and your peace. So you're never going to be happy. So those people already don't feel good about themselves. We are not there to point out their sin. 
We are there to go plead with them. We are there to restore them. We are there to lift them. Come on. Because sin will take you down, but Jesus will lift you up. And you should be like Jesus that reaches into your world and lift your friends and carry them. Oh, come on. Back into the presence of God. Come on. If we ever want a revival in our universities, we have to change our attitude. We have to stop pointing out the sins of people. And we have to love those sinners. We have to befriend those sinners. And we have to preach the gospel to those sinners. Say amen in Jesus' name. So he carries it back with cheerful delight, returning home. He called all his friends and neighbors together and said, Let's have a party. A party. Come and celebrate with me the return of my lost lamb. It wandered away, but I found it and brought it home. And Jesus continued, Now listen. Every Sunday we gather together, heaven pays attention. Listen, heaven is watching tonight. God is watching whether we are faithful to his mandate. So what matters to heaven? It's not the Christians having a good goosebump time. What matters to God is that we grow deeper in him, that we become more Christ-like. But yes, the problem when we grow deeper, we should fish deeper. Because sometimes people become theologically deeper and they become sterile. When it comes to God's assignment, they have so much knowledge and the theology that it paralyzes them from fulfilling the Great Commission. How is that possible? Because when I read the Bible, the closer you get to the heart of God, the more you will be moved by the heart of God. So to say, I'm, I'm, I'm in, into the deep things of God, you should be the person fishing in the deep waters because you can't get, get deeper than what Jesus died for 2,000 years ago. Your calling is not... To be some deep theologian without fulfilling your assignment. I'll show you this from the Bible tonight. Because people invite me all over the world and they say, listen, come and activate our church to win souls. I say, you can't activate a church to win souls if the church's culture and, and the main focus of the church is soul winning. You can't activate it. It's not a department. It is the calling. It is the assignment of the church. Winning the lost at every cost is the calling of every believer in Jesus' name. Because you are God's missionary. You are God's sent one in your world. You are studying in Vets. You are studying in, 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 in Europe. You are studying in UCT. You are studying in, in Pretoria. Wherever you are. God brought you here. Not just to get a degree. But God knew there would be people in your class. People at your campus that are lost. People that need to experience this living God. God has placed you there as an ambassador. Come on. You're in that school to reconcile your world back to Jesus. Come on, teenagers, wave at me and say amen. You are going to be the world changer. So listen, Jesus continued in the same way. He says, there will be a glorious celebration in heaven over the rescue of one lost sinner. Think how heaven celebrated last Sunday night when over 2,000 people got saved. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, church. Let's get the climate of heaven. Let's get happy and excited when people get saved. Let's, let's not be these sour, prune-sucking, lemon-sucking Christians. You want the joy and the fire of God? Be a soul winner. Be a soul winner. Bible says, he that wins souls is wise. A glorious celebration over the rescue of one lost sinner and repents and comes back home and returns to the fold. More so than for all the righteous people who never strayed away. You better think about that. Because we can come together as a church and all we do is we, 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 we become consumers. It's all about us. I mean, people get. I spoke to a pastor. I was preaching at a very large conference in America, and a good friend of mine. I don't want to say where he lives because some of you will figure it out. Uh, and his church exploded in America, etc. But nobody got saved in his church, so he's in Texas. So I said to him, after one night in the conference, uh, we walked out. I said, you know, if your church grows with three thousand people and nobody got saved, it never benefited God's kingdom. 
Think about it. Because many churches grow on transfer growth. They don't get people saved. They have a program and they lure people. Because they're not focused on the Great Commission. And the next morning he said to me, Art. You know, when I go to America, they talk to me in all different ways. I'm Art. At. Art. And he wasn't, and now I just say Adam. Okay, just call me Adam. Hallelujah. And he said, Art. 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 I've been, th- I've been up all night thinking about what you said, my brother. What you said is right. I said, exactly. Because churches compete. Churches. There's enough fish for everybody. I said, there's enough lost people for everybody. We can fill every church in Pretoria and 90% of people will still not be in church. So you cannot build your church off somebody else. You have to build your church off the Great Commission. You go reach people and you teach people. You do what Jesus called you to do. You get people saved and you raise people up in Jesus' name. Amen? Say amen. Because that's the church. A church that grows with transfer growth, people that move from Pretoria to wherever, and the pastor says, my church grew. Let's look at context. People have to get saved. If people aren't getting saved, it's benefiting the scoreboard in heaven, nothing. I want this to sink in. Because we cannot be like people in the world where we are consumers. We we treat a church like a club. No. The Bible says the Lord sets the members in the house as it pleases Him. Psalm 92 says those who are planted in the house shall flourish in the courts of our God. We have to be planted in the house of God. And we have to receive the whole counsel of God. Every part. Not, oh, I want my ego to be stimulated. I want to be motivated every Sunday. Listen, some of you have been motivated enough. You need a kick under your backside. I mean, under your blessed assurance to get out into the highways and to stop thinking about yourself and to stop being in love with yourself because that's a narcissistic syndrome. You love God and you love people. You have to get off your rusty dusty and begin to reach other people. Then you're not always going to say, oh, the church is not feeding me. What are you even saying by that? The church is not feeding me. What do you mean by that? The church is not feeding me. Do I still have to change your diaper after 20 years and, and, and stuff food down your mouth? Listen, Jesus in John chapter 4 said, My meat is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. I tell you why people think churches don't feed them because they are consumers. God never called us to be consumers. God called us to be contributors. And if you're out there reaching a world for Jesus Christ, you will remain hungry, my brother and my sister, because what satisfies you is fulfilling heaven's agenda. Not more knowledge, not more theology. And we have it all in this church. You can enroll into Bible school for three years. You can go through our uh, journey of an incoming member. We'll teach you everything but what we're not going to do is pacify you and prophesy to you from the morning to the ego morning till evening uh, and say oh great one oh great one i can only be seven minutes i've not even started i submit to the television so um I mean, I understand some churches are more prophetic. I have nothing against it. Some people are churches are more teaching. I have nothing against it. Uh, Some churches are more into worship. They worship for three hours before they preach. That's okay. They run around the building and everywhere. And when everybody's tired, uh, the preacher gets up to preach. So I get all of that. That's all fine. But that's not the main thing. (laughs) Amen. We're not a social club, although we provide social experiences. The church is not a social hangout place. The church is the pillar and ground of truth. The church is the place where God operates from. It's Zion. The church is where we are taught. The church is where we are discipled. The church is where we find our place in the body. That's why you have to get planted. You can't be a church hopper. You have to get planted. Say it tonight. Say, I have to get planted. Say it. Say it. Say, I have to get planted. Tell the person next to you. Say to that person, you have to get planted.
Amen. You have to get planted. I said you have to get planted. And, 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 and God plants you where God wants you, not where you think you should be. And, and if God plants you, you don't uproot yourself. Because the pastor said something you don't like. Aina? I love it when people look at me like this. Because it's like tickle my ears, pastor. Don't say anything that's going to offend me. Please make me feel good. I made you feel good this morning, all right? And I want you to feel good about yourself, but I really can't say how you feel good about yourself if people that you see every day are lost and, and one of them might die and go to hell. And I, I just can't get it. What must I do? Shout louder. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Open your eyes. See the fields. Understand that time is no guarantee. Tomorrow is no guarantee. Now is all I have. I, I hugged a pastor because I used to preach in, in Bloemfontein on Hoffman Square every uh, Saturday. That's where Andre met me. Used to go there on my motorbike. Then I, in the center, in the marketplace, because I'm a street evangelist at the heart. And I would first start on a plant, jump on a plant box, and then I put um, a platform and a band and preached four times, go four altar calls every Saturday morning. People would come out of the offices, people working out of the stores, people would come and hundreds would get saved every Sunday, four altar calls every Sunday morning. That's how we brought revival to that city, by the way, not in a building, outside of the building. I took the gospel out there. One day a man came, a pastor, William Bath. First time I met him, he came to Hoffman Square. And he borrowed a bike from somebody else. Climbed off the bike, listened to me, and we had a good conversation. I gave him a hug. He climbed on the bike. That was like 2 o'clock. We wrapped up the meetings. And quarter to three, I get a phone call. William was in an accident. He's dead. And his wife phones me and says, go raise him from the dead. I never knew. I tried. Okay, didn't work. I don't want to go down that path, but I did. I went there. I prayed. I laid my hands on him. I mean, it was not the greatest experience, but I mean, because they freeze you like instantly, okay? So I needed two miracles, a defrost and then a, and then a resurrection miracle. Because when I laid my hand and everything was frozen, my faith froze. I have to be honest. And she phones me, she said, did you raise him? Did you raise him? I said, no, no. I tried my best. But I, but I never knew. That was the last time I was going to see him. Never knew it. Never knew it. Wake up. I never knew. And I can tell you this of so many people that I never knew that this was the last time I was going to talk to that person. And I thank God I can tell you of hundreds of people that supernaturally God led me to. When I did street work, God led me every Friday, Saturday night, we went out to witness to people, and we continue that in our church still today. People are out on the streets all the time, because we have to take the gospel to the sinners as well. I'll never forget walking into a, uh, standing and praying, and I always followed the Holy Ghost, and He led me to the train station. And I climbed on the train without a ticket, and walked to a compartment, and there was a little girl dressed in black, a little Satanist. Already had a rope around her neck, busy hanging herself. She was about to lift her feet. And I walked in and I said, no, no, Jesus loves you. I said, no, no. And she gave her life to Jesus Christ. And she brought all her satanic, oh, listen to me, man. She brought all her satanic friends to church every Sunday. It was actually so funny. They used to come dressed in black. And then they would sit there and they would try and curse me. But how many of you know light is greater than darkness? And I would preach the love of Jesus Christ, given all the call. And all these long-legged women dressed in black, dressed in black, dressed in black, dressed in black, black, black. They all came down the aisle. Week after week after week, they just came because one little girl that was hopeless, sin so diminished her, sin so took her self-esteem. God used somebody and I was just a nobody. And I just went by the power of the Holy Ghost and I said, no, no, no. 
Jesus loves you. No, no, don't do this. Jesus loves you. And she gave her life to Jesus. And many, many people got saved. I want to tell you tonight that Jesus loves you. I want to tell you that God cares about you. I want to tell you about there, tonight there is nothing you can do that will separate you from the love God has for you. Don't let people cancel you. Don't cancel yourself. Come back to Jesus Christ. Get yourself back to Jesus Christ and make up your mind tonight to go tell your friends there is a God who loves them and you go reach that lost sheep and you take that person back into the presence of Jesus in Jesus name God bless you come on give the television audience a hand clap oh come on I feel God in this place tonight somebody God's gonna stir you up God's gonna stir you up there are places you have to go there are things you have to do there are people death is heading their way I'm telling you this by the Spirit of God and you are the person that will stand you are the person that will rescue you are the person that will bring that person back to Christ in the name of Jesus I feel it I feel it tonight there are people that need to hear the message of Jesus they are friends you have to shout you have to cry out to them because they will not see the end of this year you are the person you are the person that should pick up the telephone and tell them that God loves them, that there is a Savior that cares for them and bring them back to the house of God. Get them back into the presence of Jesus. Say amen and give the Lord a praise. Come on. So Jesus gives another parable. He says there was a woman. Because maybe when he talks about money, they'll understand it better. Because people value money more than souls. When I was a salesman, I would oftentimes lead somebody to Jesus and lose the business. No money is worth more than a soul. Sign the contract, but then tell them about Jesus. Gave them another parable. There once was a woman who had 10 valuable silver coins. When she lost one of them, she swept her entire house, diligently searching every nook and cranny for that one lost coin. But when she finally found it, she gathered all her friends and neighbors for a celebration, telling them, come and celebrate with me. I had lost my precious silver coin, but now I have found it. That's the way God responds. That's the way God responds. Not a man. The angels we see previously rejoice. Now we're talking about God. That's the way God responds. Your father, that Zephaniah talks about, who jumps up off the throne and he leaps in the air with great joy over you. He's not the stern God sitting in the heaven with a big stick ready to knock you over your head. He's a loving God with arms open wide who sent his son to die for your sin. And he watches closely. Listen, he watches closely for you and me to share our faith with people. And every time a sinner repents, the Bible says God responds and turns and he says to the angels, let's have a joyous, joyous celebration for the one who was lost I have found. I thought about this. If, if, if the church in the world does what they're supposed to do, there's a party in heaven all the time. Because people are getting saved 24-7. Think about it. And, and this is now our service. This is our time. We don't want heaven silent when we gather. We want the angels to celebrate when the church in South Africa and the church in Africa are gathering together. We want the heaven's climate on planet Earth. So there's a lot of lost sheep out there, many lost coins. We need to go find them. I said we need to go find them. Luke chapter 10, Jesus said, The harvest is great, the laborers are few. The laborers are lazy. The laborers are distracted. The laborers have become consumers. The laborers have lost what it's all about. So we need to reach these people the same way Jesus did when you have to befriend them. He was a friend of the most notorious sinners. People sometimes see me in a motorbike and we'll go certain places and people think we are there to, to backslide. We, we don't backslide. Don't worry. I'm not sliding anywhere. But I'll tell you what. I, I'll sit with those people and I don't care how many bombs they drop in their language. I'm unfazed because I'm immune. I'm insulated. I'm not isolated. 
That darkness in them is not getting into me. The light in me is greater. I have to be out there. I have to make them feel comfortable in my presence. And then at the right time, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to share my faith with them, hook them, and get them saved by the power of God. Say amen. We need to care about their eternal well-being and love them enough to risk sharing our faith with them. The church is the place where we have to be taught the Word of God. Yes, the church is the place where we have to find our spiritual assignment in the body of Christ and serve. We have a saying in our church, uninvolved people will never reach spiritual maturity. You can't be an onlooker. You have to be a participator. You have to get into the game. So the church is a place where we are shepherded. It's a place we are cared for, where we bear one another's burdens, home cells, right? Where we are taught the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. Where we are trained and equipped, mobilized. Mobilized to go into all the world and to share our faith. It's not an either or approach. It's not we are a teaching church so we don't win souls, or we are soul winning church, therefore we do not teach. We have to teach in order to equip people. Because the Bible is clear in Ephesians chapter 4 that God gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18, the Bible says the ministry of reconciliation, that God is living in us, crying through us, that this world be reconciled to God. So even if you prophesy, the purpose of prophecy is to reconcile people back to God. There's not a higher ministry. We are called to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me today? So you cannot come and say, I'm a Bible teacher, and I am a deep disciple of God, and the loss doesn't matter to you. Because that discipleship means absolutely nothing. Discipleship means you act like Jesus Christ. John 20, 21, as my Father sent me, so sent I you. So you cannot grow deeper in Christ, and you do not carry a deeper purpose of Christ in your heart. Oh, I just love to worship. I love spending time in the presence of God. When I mean, Isaiah did it in Isaiah chapter 6, and he sees the seraphim, and he sees the cherubim, and he sees God on the throne, holy, holy, holy. And, 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 and he says, Whoa, I'm undone, a man of unclean lips. And an angel come, touches his clothes, and his iniquity is perched away. He hears the cry of the Father that says, Whom shall I send, and who will go with us? It wasn't a moment of silence. It was a moment of purpose. Moses at the burning bush. God says, come, I've seen my people. The fire wasn't there to give Moses a great time. The fire was there to get Moses' attention so Moses could go and deliver the people of God. Get out of consumerism. Get out of just wanting things for yourself and catch the fire so you can go and set people free in your world. Are you listening tonight? It's like we want Christianity without responsibility. When Jesus calls Peter, and, 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 and Andrew's brother, he says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. That's the purpose. Paul writes in Timothy, he says, um, Christ came into this world to save sinners of who I am chief. Luke 19, 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Mark 16, verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The final instruction of Jesus Christ to you and me is to preach the gospel to our friends, our world, to share our faith. And I want to say this without criticizing anybody. There's no such thing as having a church and the, the, the lost is not at the top of the agenda. It doesn't exist in the Bible because the early church never operated like that. The early church were deep in the apostles' teaching, deep in community, deep in, in prayer. But the church grew. 3,000 got saved in one day. Acts 2.47, the Lord added to the church daily. Acts chapter 5, the number of disciples multiplied greatly. And, 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 and Acts chapter 5, an increasing number of believers were added to the Lord. Acts chapter 8, when they were scattered everywhere with persecution, they preached the gospel. They never lost their purpose. So don't come and tell me that you want a church that just tickles your fancy and does not mobilize you into the assignment of God. Because my brother, it's not biblical. You're very quiet here. Because give me the reason or the purpose that's higher than Christ. If Christ is both apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist, and his assignment is to win the lost. 
It's like you have to wrestle people to keep the main thing the main thing. It's like people look at you, especially when you speak at pastors' conferences, and you say, listen, this is not criticism. It's okay to have, because um, the church will take on a, a certain characteristic of the pastor's dominant gift. I get it. But the, the dominant gift cannot overshadow the dominant purpose. And that purpose is to seek and save the lost. That my life has a purpose. The purpose of my life is to save souls. Whether I'm a doctor, lawyer, dentist, businessman, I have a purpose. I'm God's ambassador. I'm sent by God into my world. Say amen. So yes, we need to be taught. But listen to what Paul says to Timothy as a pastor. In 2 Timothy 4 verse 1, he says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with a long suffering and teaching. So teach the church. Exhort the church. Rebuke people. Teach them the word of God. Teach doctrine. But doctrine is not the final aim. Let's continue. It says, for the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears. What's a itchy ear? An itchy ear. I just want to hear what I want to hear. Don't say anything that offends me. Don't talk to me about the things that I don't want to hear. If you dare, I'm going to find myself another club. I'm getting myself out of this place because I can't handle truth. I want itchy ear. Just tell me, 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 myself, and I. Only thing that matters, me, 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 myself, and I. Only thing that matters. No, 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 no. You matter. That's why Jesus died for you. But after you are saved, you now have a responsibility. You have a kingdom responsibility. And you need leaders to talk to you about your kingdom responsibility. Not leaders who pacify you and make you a pure warmer. You should not be a pure warmer. You should be an ambassador. Oh, come on, man. An ambassador of God. And be loud and unashamed like Paul says. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Just control young people. They're not going to be unruly. I said it last night. I won't deal with it. I'll deal with it from the platform. If you have a bladder problem, I'll pray for you. Okay? You're a visitor here. House rule. Sit down. Thank you. Show respect. It's not a school where you disrespect your principal. So, um, it says, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. So, you watch Christian TV, the minute the person says something you don't like, what do you do? You flip the channel. Oh man, there's three honest people here tonight. The minute they go where you don't feel comfortable, you flip the channel. You say, I don't like him. Why don't you like him? Because he said. No, he didn't say. He said what the Bible says. So, what's the issue? What's the issue? The issue is you don't like what he said because he said what the Bible said. Because you want the portions that abdicate you from responsibility. And there's no Christianity like that in the Bible. You are the good Samaritan. You are the good Samaritan. Go and do likewise. Show mercy, social justice. There's no Christianity in this Bible where you live for yourself. It does not exist in the Bible. Where you live for yourself, for your wife, and your children. Me, myself, and I. Oh, Pastor, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, I haven't seen you in church for a long time. Uh, you know. <laughs> you know, we just, we're just spending more time as a family with the Lord. Praise God. And, you know, and since we haven't been coming to church, we've grown so deep in the things of God. And we're growing so close to one another. <laughs> You know, almost like did something inappropriate. It's like, makes me wanna. Uh, since I've not, you know, I used to go to church, but, and I meet these people all the time, especially in Pretoria. I used to go to church, and now some of you haters are now gonna go for, so, for me on social media. Enjoy hating. I thought we should love. Enjoy it. Peace. Peace. (laughs) 
it's, it's like, oh, I'm so, so deeper in the things of God. And then you tell them what the Bible says. And the snake comes out. Venom. Huh? That's okay. How many people have you reached? Oh, no, it's not about that. It's about, you know, it's like, it's like, and they have the way they roll their eyes. Have you seen? You know, it's like, you know, it's really, it's like sitting at the feet of Jesus and just getting to know the Lord. And just, you know, it's just. Thank God you were not one of the early disciples because the church would never grow. Thank God you were not one of the original 12 because the church would have died with you. Come on, man, give the Lord a praise. Come on. <laughs> That's like it's so religious. Because they want to live outside of Scripture. So now they look for things to tickle their ears. Then I say, give me a Scripture. Oh, no, the Lord told me. What Lord? The Lord of Beelzebub. The Lord Lucifer. The Lord who? Not the Lord Jesus, because the Lord Jesus can't violate Scripture. I've been to three churches and I've been hurt. Excuse me, how hurt have I been by millions of people that... Uh, that so, so, I say something that offends you, you tell me past time behind you, and next week you're gone. So who should be hurt? Who should be mistrusting? Huh? You have to deal with one, I have to deal with hundreds of thousands. Get over yourself. Because I had to, if I didn't get over myself, I wouldn't be here no more. I'd be on a boat somewhere, sailing the Mediterranean Sea, enjoying love of life, like Jonah running away from Nineveh. I just sail away. Said I've had enough. Some of you, you want scripture and you've had enough. You don't have stomach for truth. What's your makeup? Huh? Is there a spine? I'm just playing with you because I know you all have to love me. As I have to love you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll close now. Okay, before I offend too many people. So they will leave up teachers having itching ears. And they will turn the ears away from the truth. And be turned aside to fables. But you, Pastor Timothy, you be watchful in all things. He's talking to a pastor. Pastors the church of Ephesus. Some Bible scholar says it was a church of about 10,000 members that it grew. Large church, influential church. You be watchful in all things, endure affliction, hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. So Paul has to remind Timothy, who's actually a gentle person. Paul wasn't the most gentle of characters. The Bible's very clear. But Paul was. Oh, Timothy was. That's why Paul has to tell Timothy all the time. He says, don't be ashamed of me the prisoner of the Lord and don't be ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power, love and a sound mind because Timothy, Timothy's nature is to shy away so Paul has to talk to him all the time and say hey keep the main thing the main thing you don't have a spirit of timidity you have a spirit of power, love and a sound mind and you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost you receive power and, and, and the, the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not to give you a goosebump. It's to empower you to be a witness for Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Come on, say amen, man. That's why God anointed you. I want to answer this and close, okay, in two minutes. Time me. Why has Jesus not returned? I'm going to give you three scriptures. Write it down. Here it is. What the Bible says. What is God waiting for to send His Son to come back? Matthew 24, verse 14, the Bible says, The gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. First, the church has to do the job. Then Jesus will come. 
If we are not faithful in this generation, God will wait for another generation. James chapter 5 and 7, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth and waiting patiently for it until he receives the early and later rate. And he has an astounding scripture. That's why we should pray for Israel. I'm not going to talk anything politically, but we should pray for Israel and we should thank God that as Gentiles we have been grafted into the branch. We should thank God that God put a veil on Israel. Their minds were blinded so that you and I as Gentiles have the opportunity to get saved. Okay? Listen to the scripture. Romans 11, 25, the Passion Translation says, My beloved brothers and sisters, I want to share with you a mystery concerning Israel's future. For understanding this mystery will keep you from thinking you already know everything. A partial and temporary hardening to the gospel has come over Israel, which will last until the full number of the non-Jews or the Gentiles has come into God's family. The full number. So God has a number. And once that number is reached, because God knows who He wants in heaven. How many people? How big He wants His family to be? Once that number is reached, the greatest revival is going to hit Israel. And that will be a sign of the tribulation and the return of Jesus Christ, where 144,000 male Jewish evangelists will be raised up and there will be a season where people will see the Messiah, hallelujah, and the Jews are going to get saved, and Jesus is going to come back and He's going to rule from Jerusalem, and you and I will serve the Lord forever and ever and ever. And there's one reason, there's but one reason why Jesus has not come back. He's waiting for a number. Yes, He's waiting for a number. So God is not interested in the chosen few. God wants multitudes. God wants nations. God wants every tongue, tribe, and nation to hear the gospel and to go to heaven. Because Jesus didn't just die for my world and your world. He died for the whole world. Come on, family. Let's commit ourselves to take Jesus Christ to our friends and to our colleagues and, 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 and to get up and wake up and to stop playing Christianity. And... Uh, this assignment, by the way, I started by telling you that um, the last week two people died that uh, I know of tragically, terrible. Don't focus on what happened to them, focus that they did. Not one of them woke up that morning and thought, this is my last day. Think about it. We don't want to think about this, but this is true. I mean, December, we had some of our young people go somewhere and they had a car accident. And I, how many of them died? Three out of the four died. Beautiful people, young people, 2021, 20, dead. Blech. Gone. Have you ever seen a dead body? I've seen many. Have you, have you seen, when you look at a person, that that person is not there? Now, uh, that person doesn't even look the same. Have you seen people die? Have you been there while they die? I have. I've been in, 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 in the hospital with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in their rooms. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that left this earth. I've been there. When it's the final moment. In the army, people get shot. I saw it. And you hear them cry for their mothers. Their final moment, they cry. The macho men, They cry. Many of them curse God, but they all cry for their mothers. It's an amazing thing. Ma, 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 ma. Why? I don't know. They shout for their mothers. They lost. They know they're going to die. I've stood and I've seen people die without Christ, and I've seen them wrestle. I've seen people with their final breath mock God and refuse to give their life to Jesus Christ. People are sitting listening to me today. You had your final breath. You don't even know it. I'm not putting damnation or judgment upon you. I'm telling you the fact. You don't know. This life is a vapor. It's not something you can play with. It's not something you can mess around with. You think later. Young people always think later. There may be no later. I don't know. But one thing I do know, you have this moment. And if you're not right with God, that means you are lost. And that means God brought you here tonight to hear me say this. Sitting there in Cape Town, one of those students, Stalin Bosch, Potschefstrom, Durban, sitting in 
Kimberley, many got saved last week in Kimberley, Poch, uh, Pit, uh, Port Elizabeth, many, many got saved, Bloomdain, all those students, thousands there tonight, Johannesburg, Wits, UJ, sitting there tonight. Look, we can all be radical, and some of us were more radical than other people. So I look at these young people in our country that toy burn, toy toy burn, and, 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 I, and I see their frustration. I get it. And, and legislation won't change them. They need Christ. They need a cause. They need a savior. We should stop criticizing those people. We should actually take Jesus to them. We should take a cause of Christ to them. But you're sitting here tonight, and you're not okay with God. You're not right with God. If you die tonight, you don't know where you would spend eternity. It's something you have to answer. It's reality. Maybe you are the lost coin. Maybe you are the lost sheep. At one time you served God, but you're not serving Him. You're sitting on a fence. It's a dangerous place to be. Maybe like the prodigal, you've left your father's house for whatever. It's not why you are where you are. It's getting back to God. Allowing God to bring you back. Tonight somebody invited you to church for me to preach this message to you. To say to you, that you matter, your soul matters, your life matters. You are one of the number that God wants saved. And tonight He's knocking at your heart. He's sitting for now. Don Bloemfontein, Pots of Stroom. Kijk, ek was jare in a kerk geweest, groot geweest in a kerk. Ek het geen verhouding met die Heere gehad nie. Ek het elke aand by my bed gebid. Heere, vergewe my genadiglik, al my sondes, om my naam sondes wil. Geen verhouding met die Heere gehad nie. Ek was verloore geweest. Ek het in die kerk gesit, ek was verloore geweest. Totaal verloore. Ek het dogma gehad, doktrine gehad. Aangeneem, gekatkeseerd, die al die dinge gedoen, maar geen verhouding met Jesus gehad nie. En ek het het geweet. En ek sal vir jou sê, as jy nie reg is om die Heere nie, dan weet jy dit. Jy kan allemaal, jy kan allemaal bluff, maar jy kan jouself nie bluff nie. En as jy jouself bluff, dan is jy seker een psychopaat. Ek weet nie. But I don't think there are any psychopaths here tonight. But I tell you tonight, you know. I'm, I'm lost or I'm not. Maybe you've lost yourself partially. I don't know. I plead with you. Because that's what 2 Corinthians said. God is pleading through me to you. And I'm pleading you with you to be re- reconciled with God. And the Afrikaans, I smeek you. I don't know if you want me. I smeek you. Hou op speel. Maak yourself right with God. And you can yourself be right with God. You have to God to bring. You have to bring yourself to God. You have to allow God to work in you as he is tonight, and you have to come tonight and say, yes, Lord, I give you my life. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Some of you sitting at the back, I can't see you because of the lights. You used to sit in the front. Maybe, I don't know. Now you're sitting at the back. It's not okay. It's not okay that you're losing your zeal and your fire for God. Where is it going to end? Surely you should ask that question, right? Where is it going to end? If a year ago you were passionate, zealous for God, and now you're clubbing, where's it going to end? How's it going to end? Don't you care about yourself? Don't you matter to yourself? That you think it's just okay? Because your friend now is losing themselves. You think, okay, let's both lose ourselves. Why would you do that? Why? Don't you value yourself enough? And love yourself enough? to listen to me and to get those shutters down in your little eyes and mind because you don't like what I'm saying to you. My question is, where is it going to end? The path you're on right now, where is it ending? Where is it leading to? Tonight you have to get on the right path. Get back on the right path. A path of life. A path of freedom. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. No one moving now. Johannesburg, Pretoria, Cape Town, Kimberley, Vintuk, all over South Africa. Tonight God's talking to you. And tonight you say, Pastor, I need to get right with God. I need to come back. I need a fresh start. I want to pray for you. I want to help you. I want to help you find your way back to Jesus tonight. But you have to open your heart and say, yes, Lord. Tonight you're sitting in this place, people praying in all our churches. Tonight you say, yes, that's me. I've lost myself. I've wandered away, but tonight I want to come back. I need a fresh start with God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Forget people around you. If that's the cry of your heart, they're in Cape Town, in Pots of Struam, Bloemfontein, Johannesburg, you're in Pretoria, in any one of the churches, in your heart, God is talking to you. The good shepherd is reaching out to you. And tonight you say, I'm hearing you. 
I want to get right with God. If that's your desire, quietly, wherever you are, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Quickly, slip your hand up. All over this place, raise it up, 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 unashamedly. Raise it up. Many hands. God bless you, bless you, bless you. Raise it up. God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Raise it up. God bless you, bless you, many. God bless you, bless you, bless you. There in Bloomdown, raise your hand. Raise your hand. God praat met jou van aan as a woeling die binnen in jou. Is hier wat met jou praat. Kom huis toe man. Kom terug. Keer terug na jou eerste liefde toe. Vergeet jou vriend wat langs jou sit man. Vergeet hy vriend wat dink as jou baas. Vergeet het. Vergeet hy boyfriend wat jou manipuleer vanavond. Vanavond neem jy die besluit. Vir jou siel. Vir jou saligheid. En vanavond gee jou leven terug vir Jesus. Ek wil vir jou bid vanavond. As dit jy is vanavond... Tell you what for a good finance. He slid me in a gebed and for a No, in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye, Ander. Please look at me, all of you beautiful people. You are all beautiful. Created in God's image, okay? So please, can we do something? Heaven stands to attention when people reconcile with God. So in all our churches, will we, can we please stand to our feet? Please, everybody, just stand to your feet. Let all things be done decently and in order. You're not running for the door now. It's the only time the doors are locked. No, I'm just playing with you. No, I'm not. All over this place. I'm not letting the devil steal one person. Tonight you've raised your hand or you've not. You brought a friend. Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. You put your arm around your friend. And you bring your friend to Christ. So all of our churches, if you raised your hand, you want to get right with God tonight, leave your seat wherever you are. Step out of the aisle closest to you. Walk down the aisle closest to you. I'm going to meet with you at the altar. God's going to do a beautiful thing in your life tonight. Come on, all over our churches. Come on, come down the steps. Move to the side. Come down the steps. Walk down the aisle closest to you. Come on there in Cape Town. Leave your seat and walk to the front. Don't think about it. There's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. You leave your seat tonight and you come home. You come back. You come to Jesus. You come to Jesus there in Bloomfield Tain. You come to Jesus. You come to Jesus tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There in Potsdam's Drum. Come, young man. Come on to studier. But you're a journey to black. You're a brand for not to be on the red. Look for not. En ontvang God sy vergifnis, sy liefde en sy genade in die naam van Jesus. Kom aan, sit jou hand om jou vriend en loop saam met jou vriend vanavond. Come on, in Jesus name, come, 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 come. Come on. Come on, there's a miracle, a miracle, a miracle, a miracle, a miracle, a miracle. A miracle of salvation waiting for you tonight. There's a miracle. There's a miracle. Another miracle. A miracle. Somebody else is going to get saved tonight. A miracle. A miracle. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's rejoice with the heavens as more people are coming. Come on. Confinant, confinant, confinant on Bloemfontein. Confinant on in Bosses through them. They're in Johannesburg. Look at all the people getting saved every week in Johannesburg. That's a miracle. Vitz and UJ people getting saved by the hundreds every single week. Hallelujah. And people say there's no hope for South Africa. I tell you there's hope because this young generation are turning back to God. Come on, Bloemfontein. Come on, Bloemfontein. Come on, Cape Town. I give you everything. I give you all of me. My heart is yours. Now and forevermore. There's nowhere I'd rather be than right in surrendering. My heart is yours.
Listen, I want that song miracle. Change everything, please. I want to enjoy what's happening here tonight. God's got a miracle. Amen. Let's just lift up our energy. Just sing it for me. Just make me feel good now, okay? Because I want to feel good with God tonight. Because this is the greatest miracle that can take place. Amen. It's a funeral for the devil. It's not a funeral for the church. This is a resurrection. This is a miracle. More people are going to come all over our churches. Come on, he died so you can live. Come on, my brother. You're a strong man. Let's go for it. Come on. Come on. Let's go for it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey! A miracle of revival. Miracle after miracle. Open door, open heart. Come on, young people. We're going to see a move of God in our universities. Come on. Miracle after miracle. Open door after open door. Here it comes. So get ready for it. Sing if he could, if he can. He will again, and if he told the storm to be still, and it did, he will again. Come on, God's gonna move in your life tonight, no matter what you face. Come on, and it did, he will again, and if he told the walls where to fall, and it did, come on, the walls of religion are coming down. And if he told the chains with the pray, and it did, those chains of addiction are broken. Come on, there's more of you. Come out of your prison tonight. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And again, 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 and again. Come on, the lost are gonna come running home. We see revival. Come on, God says, I will whistle for them and they're going to come running. Oh, we see them running, running. Say it again, and if he Somebody dogs, heaven is having a party. And again, every Sunday. Come on. God's not run out of miracles. I feel the presence of God falling in this place. Hallelujah. And again, and again, and again. Come on, God's not run out of miracles. God has not run out of power. God has not run out of solutions. God has not run out of answers. South Africa. Young people. Your future is in the hands of God. Come on, somebody.
Come on, last time and again. And again. Well, I think that's what's happening in the heaven right now. The heavens are rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing so we can rejoice as well. Jesus. Amen. Say, woo! Here he says, big light, drachta. It's because we are so excited. How about you? Yeah. We are. Because we know how much God matters to you and we know the devil has tried to destroy your life and will continue to try and do that. So we are happy. That's why I wanted to sing a happy song. Happy. Because you are the miracle. You are the miracle. What's happening in your life tonight is the miracle. And God's starting something in your life tonight that God's going to continue. And if you walk with Him, He's going to lead you and guide you every day of your life. And give you beautiful ashes. See, I see myself where you stand when I got saved. And my life was a wreck, a mess. Maybe yours is not. But we're all messed up without Jesus. And when I found Jesus, not found him, he wasn't lost. When Jesus found me, it connected. And everything changed. I actually believed. I experienced God's love. And I found meaning and wholeness and purpose. And that's what God has for you tonight. No matter what you've done, how you got lost, what caused you to be lost, it's not the issue. The issue is tonight that you receive the love God has for you. And that you receive Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. And that you receive God's forgiveness. I want you to put your hand on your heart. Forget people around you now. All the thousands across South Africa. Put your hand on your heart and pray this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, you've touched me. And here I am responding to you by coming to give myself back to you. Thank you that you love me so much that you died for me on the cross. You became sin in my place so that I could be righteous. You went to hell in my place. And face the judgment of God in my stead. But you rose again and you are alive. So today I ask you, Jesus Christ, save me, wash me, forgive my sin. I open my heart to you and I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you today for the miracle of salvation. I receive the gift of righteousness freedom and liberty by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you that I'm born again, that I'm your child, that I have a future because of you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. And that burden and that yoke and that shame of sin is lifted off of you. Go and sin no more. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give them one more big hand clap tonight. In the name of Jesus. Miracle after miracle. We've seen this for 30 years in uh, CRC. Hundreds getting saved every week. Can we please pray with you before you go home tonight? We want to give you a Bible and see how we can walk this journey of discipleship with you. Because we have to reach people, then we teach people. And we have a whole journey where we will visit you, invite you to a home cell, have somebody walk with you and help you grow in the things of God because you need new relationships that will help you to be a strong child of God. So if you will turn to my right, your left, please, here in Pretoria. In Bluvedei, turn to my left, your right. In uh, Johannesburg, turn to my right. Follow, 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 follow the guy, the counselors. Because sometimes they direct the traffic like I just did and it's, it's chaos, okay? So forget the load shedding. Your sins have been forgiven. Go with the counselors. Come on, look in Bloemfontein. Hundreds and hundreds getting saved. You're in Pretoria, Johannesburg. I'm sure in Cape Town and all the churches. 
Come on, that's a miracle, 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 miracle. Miracle. take your seats. Thank you. All the other churches, um, the pastors take over and uh, the facilitators take over and continue um, in your services as you would. Um, we are going to do two baby dedications. So I love dedicating babies. Unfortunately, I can't be in the mornings because while you dedicate the babies, I have to go to Johannesburg. So uh, those parents um, that have their babies dedicated with all your extended family, um, your ooms, your neefs, your nuggies, your tannies, your... Net nie your hond nie. Uh, we actually had a, a woman that brought a dog to church every Sunday. Su- I don't care. I, I, mean, I mean, if it's a dog, your guide dog, I understand that. But she was just like, this is my bull terrier. And I used to like bull terriers. So I tolerated it for like three weeks till the dog became a nuisance. So I said, no girl, the dog can never get saved. So it's not McDonald's farm. It's the house of God. So I love your dog, but uh, amen. How many of you believe animals go to heaven? <laughs> uh, okay, bring your dog next week. I'm going to give an altar call. And all the dogs said, hoo, hoo. <laughs> all the dogs, dog. Hey, you're a bad dog. Dog. Hey, big dog. Big dog. Get the big dogs to church. Not the dog, the dog. T A W G. The dog. <laughs> Gee. Jaco, you let the groot family. Let it yellow all. Groot hello. Queen on. Why welcome. Hi. How are you all? This man is a phenomenon. He started the business when you were how old? Twelve years old. Uh, seven distinction in matric, uh, obviously in great college, okay. Okay, but I mean, he owned a lot of property, etc. cetera, um, when he was like 16. Yeah, he was in business while he was at school, getting seven distinctions, etc., etc. et cetera. So, yeah. One of, the, one of the wealthiest people in our church also, he was an orphan, and um, now he's got property all over South Africa, etc., and actually in America, and he's got a very rare bone disease, and never knew his father. He's, he um, grew up in an orphanage and then in, a, uh, in a, a foster care, whatever you call it, in South Africa, and he started selling soap. Also, I think as a what, 12-year-old? 12 years old as well. 12, no, this was Jesus, no? 12 years old, and he, um, I mean, bought his first property when he was 14. Somebody helped him, then 16. And by the time he left school, he had so many properties, etc. And he had everything against him, but he took soap, bought like big bottles of soap, threw it in little containers, and sold it from door to door to door to door to door. You see, there's always something you can do. So people like this, huge inspiration for me. So give the Lord a praise, Amen. Hello. Amen. Okay, Amen. So, die ba was a sikke geniaal ook, soos die maan die pa. Amen, pastor. Amen. So, Jaco and Mandy, Maya, Maya, in Madison. In Maya betekent splendid, to shine, to be bright. And Madison, mighty warrior, strength in battle, a gift. The scripture is, here's another way to put it, what I preached about tonight. You have to be light, bringing out God's colors in the world. Yeah. Amen. You want to preach? God's not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. As public as a city on the hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket or do you? I'm putting on a light stand now that I've put you here on a hilltop 
on a light stand, shine, and then Madison, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Come on, how many of you think that's great? You know, it matters what you name your child. Hello. Hij werkt bij de kerk. Hoe kom je? Werkt ze voor jou? Ik wil je met haar vast zo. Is het? Oké, okay, ik ga nou. Nee, ik speel sommige met jullie. So Albert en uh, Kaylen, Elisa Kutzer, meaning predestined by God and promised by God. Before you were even born, you gave us our destiny that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in His heart. It's important that we dedicate our children to the Lord and that we raise our children in the ways of God. I'll tell you, one of the greatest uh, privileges I have as a pastor is when I greet people before the service and I see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young couples that bring their children to church. That gives me hope. I mean, all the mother's rooms in Bloemfontein, in Pretoria, in Johannesburg are full. Um, all the side rooms and then they sitting in chairs and everything at the back. A big shout out to all the young families. The way you serve God and the way you raise your children in the ways of God. Come on, we salute you. We commend you. And families like this as well. Amen. Will you reach your hands out? Come on, let's pray the blessing of God. Come on, stand with me tonight. Your faith is here tonight. So we pray, Father, over Maya and Madison. And we speak the favor and the blessing of God. We separate them unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, we dedicate them unto you to serve you all the days of their life. We put a hedge of fire and protection around them, Father, and we say they're blessed coming in, they're blessed going out, Father. No harm will come to them. They will only experience goodness and mercy all the days of their life. We call these feet blessed. Father, walking in the ways of God, these hands anointed, working the works of God, these ears separated to hear the voice of God. We separate you today as we dedicate you unto the Lord your God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then, Alyssa, we dedicate you unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. May the faith that is in your grandparents and in your parents be in you also. May you be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. May you always experience the goodness, the grace, and the mercy of God. May your strength of personality be a strength to many. May you bring comfort to many and may you be a voice of hope to people wherever you go in Jesus' name. I separate you unto God, and I order your steps in the ways of God. I say you are anointed, you are appointed to do great things for God in the name of Jesus. And everybody says amen, and amen, and amen, 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 amen. amen. Take your seats. Thank you. God bless you, all of you. What a privilege to pray for you. Um, we almost finished. I want to say this. Uh, we help young people that fall pregnant. So uh, our women's ministry, Marie staan geopen So we help people. We, we, we're very involved in different kinds of ministries, etc. So if you fall pregnant, uh, please talk to us. We will help you, assist you in any way possible. Okay? You matter to us. So we want to help you. Okay? If you've gone through trauma in any way, talk to us. All right? Before you just abort the baby, talk to us. Please. As a belief. Please. Amen. Amen. Sometimes things happen. And sometimes, well, I need to be careful saying this. It's the innocent girl that falls pregnant. You're going to say, but Pastor, she can't be innocent if she falls pregnant. Okay, it's the... Um, it's the innocent girl. No, it's the church girl. No, it's the, it's the one that's not street smart. It's, it's, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay? So uh, talk to us. And if you've been through trauma, you've been through abortion, and you're struggling with guilt uh, and things like this, come and talk to us, please. When you talk to one of our counselors, you're secretly safe with us. Our counselors and pastors may not disclose anything that you share with them in confidence. Not to me or to anybody else. So you have a safe space. Whatever you're wrestling with, any addiction, any challenge, come talk to us. Talk to us. Our policy is very clear. If a pastor repeats your crisis to somebody else, he will be dismissed instantly. Instantly. Are you listening? 
So please. The Bible says, let the strong bear the, uh, uh, the challenges, the weaknesses of the weak. So if you're facing a challenge, don't think you by yourself or alone. And then at the same time, don't just talk to anybody. Because you talk to your friend in the home cell, you tomorrow's gossip news. We have pastors, we have specialized counselors, we have social workers, we have doctors that give their time, etc., 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 to work with any kind of trauma and any kind of crisis that you may face. So talk to us. Before you go talk, because you feel guilty about something, you talk to your friend, because your friend will gossip about you. And you don't need that. Amen? So please uh, reach out to us, because sometimes we put a smile on our face, but we're broken on the inside, right? We want to help you. If you're going through an identity crisis, it doesn't help I stand here and I... Uh, Bible bash you. We want to help you, whatever you are facing, and help you find your way back to Jesus. Help you find healing, restoration, because you matter. We're not here just to get you saved. We're here to help you recover fully, spirit, soul, and body, because we love you. We care about you. You need to hear me tonight. I said, believe. Talk to us. Amen. You may be a, a guy strong, and everybody thinks you've got it together but you're struggling in an area of your life. Talk to us. Your, 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 your issue is safe. And I'll say it again, my staff know. They may not, except if a minor is involved by law, we have to get a social worker involved, uh, and we work very discreetly. But anything else is dealt with in extreme confidentiality. And any pastor who cannot deal with things in confidentiality and goes to his wife and tells his wife, gee, I counseled this person. That I didn't know Sister So-and-so had this problem. My prayer, I don't want to get this out of you, because it's not a good day for you. If somebody shares their pain with you, respect it. If somebody comes to you in the home cell and they talk to you, respect it. Cover them. I've had many people talk to me about private issues. I've never shared it with anybody else. Because it's not my place. Listen to me very carefully. And don't go talk about people in the guise of prayer. That's gossip. God doesn't respond to that. You know, Sister So-and-so came to see me and, gee, you know, I uh, never realized she's got this problem. We really need to pray for Sister So-and-so. Gossiper. That's not love. That's gossip. If God lays somebody on your heart, you pray for them by yourself. You don't go tell other people, God's telling us to pray for so-and-so. It doesn't work like that. Amen. So all the counselors in the church, please. All the overseers, supervisors, people that counsel people on different levels, show extreme love, care, respect. And never share what somebody shares with you in confidence. And if, if, if there's a minor involved and certain issues that you can see on our website, then there are certain parts that you have to follow and we will deal with it in a discreet way. Do you understand that? Hmm? Maar kijk, as jy nou sikkel, ek bedoel het nou vriendelik, met die alcoholprobleem vir 10 jaar, jy gaan die alcoholprobleem nie by jouself oplos nie. Dit gaan nie. Dit, dit gaan nie werk nie. Jy kan kom en sê, ek is vry en sovoort. Nee, you need somebody to walk with you and help you and hold you accountable and, and go into your house and see where you're hiding your alcohol and your stashes and, and, and get it out and throw it in the zinc and throw it down the toilet and, and you can throw your tantrums and things like that, but somebody has to love enough to get involved and if you're that person that's been trusted, don't give up on a person. Because after three months, they lapse all the time. You are going to win that person back, right? Because this shepherd searched until he found it. That means he looked and looked and looked and he did whatever he could do to bring that person back. Bring people back. Don't give up on people. Don't write people off. We are God's family. We are committed to one another in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Come on. We are here for you to help you and to lift you. Come on. Love you.
Amen. Who's taking over? Amen. For tonight's offering, I've got the privilege of facilitating this part of the service, and I thank Pastor Art and Pastor Nareta for family for this opportunity. Tonight, I want to ask you a question. What is most important to you? Now, I know we're sitting in church. Everyone says, Jesus. But think about it. What do you spend your money on? Where does most of your money go? Where does most of your time go? Where does all your effort go? All of your thinking go? Those are indications of what is important to you. I want to read to you a scripture in Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21. It says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is will be also. So family, our treasure determines our orientation of our hearts. So who has your treasure? Not what is your treasure, who is your treasure? Your treasure should be J-E-S-U-S, right? And if He is our treasure, we will spend our time, our talent, our treasure on Him. Just like when you get a girlfriend, you will make time for her. You will invest some money, Right? You will use your talents to gain her attention. If you've got kids, you'll feed them. You'll clothe them. You'll teach them. All of those things cost money. It's a sacrifice, right? But we do it easily, not grudgingly, because we love. Jesus said, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son. Listen, before we even gave anything to God, not that we can even give God, we're actually just giving God back what He gave us, right? Before we even started giving to Him, He already gave to us His best. So giving comes out of a place, not grudgingly, not because we must, but because we want to, because we love God. So ushers may rise as we stand, we, and stand and collect the offering as we listen to an anointed item. God bless. When I am anxious, when I am afraid, I'll take it to God and I'll call on His name. If the mover of mountains is listening to me, why should I worry? Why should I fear anything? For I know the plans He has for me. For yes, I know the plans He has for me. For my Hope and a future. When I am waiting for His promise to come, sometimes He's silent, but I'm never alone. He walks through the valleys, He quiets the storm.
Amen. Let's just quickly pray over the offering. Father, we thank you for every person who gave. Father, thank you that it will be pressed down, shaken together, running over in their lives. Thank you, Father, that we've got the opportunity to further your kingdom. Thank you, Father, for great soil that we can sow into in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says amen and amen. Now, before you go, I see people jumping up. I don't know. Have a seat. Because uh, please turn your attention to the screens for this week's announcements. Amen. Hi there and welcome to CRC, the best place to be. It is a blessing to have you with us today. Most definitely, TD. Now, family, exciting news. Next week, Sunday, we will be having baptisms right here at church. This is a massive event for us every single year. And so it's an awesome opportunity to invite friends and family. For more information, please contact your zone pastor or visit our information desk directly after the service. Baptisms are here, family. Join us for a mass water baptism on the 3rd of March. Remember to bring a towel and dry clothes to change it after you get baptized. Also, please make sure to bring the appropriate dress code with dark clothes that are non-see-through. For more information, please visit crcchurch.com. As believers in God, we are graced with the opportunity to be the hands and feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Family, we have been receiving many requests from people on how to get involved in the Beauty for Ashes campaign. Here are some ways that you can help fight gender-based violence in South Africa. You can sponsor items for the CRC case crates, mobilize your home cell or structures to get involved. Assist with the packing and the distribution. Encourage and open doors to corporate companies that want to make a difference, and many more. Join us as we uplift the women and children affected by GBV in our communities. For more information on how you can get involved, get in touch with your zone pastor or visit our website at crcchurch.com. Attention CRC parents, we need to do our part and secure the future that God has intended for our children. We have the opportunity to protect and promote religious freedom in our public schools, but we need each and every one of you to get involved. We recommend that every parent with a child in a public school gets involved in the school governing body elections in March. Parents have the most seats in the governing body, and a parent must be the chairperson. The SGB elections are a powerful opportunity to protect and promote religious freedom in our public schools. These elections will decide the ethos and culture of the public schools where your child is studying for the next three years. Parents have the power to decide the vision and mission 
ethos, values, and religious policies of the school, teaching materials to stop ideological content from being pushed into the school, appointment and promotion of teachers, use and rental of school facilities by, for example, churches and religious organizations. Scan the QR code or visit www.forsa.org.za forward slash SGB elections for more info. Amen. So there's a lot of stuff happening at the church. Amen. We are part of a church that's on the move. So I just want to remind you, like we heard now, baptism next week, straight after the service. Don't come in white. Bring extra clothes. Bring a towel. If you've not been baptized, your life will change. Amen. And invite family, friends. It's a harvest event, right? It's a, a public declaration of an inward transformation that happened. So use it as a harvest event. Next week, it's going to blow up. It's going to be huge. Then uh, this Tuesday, 7 o'clock in the chapel, there will be spiritual gifts. And then straight after the service, there will be pastors and leaders in front here to pray for you if there's anything that you need prayer for. Let's just close the service in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the word that was preached tonight. Father, thank you that it will fall in good ground, good soil, Father, that we will take the word into the highways and the byways, that we will make it our own, that we will go to our friends and our family, invite them, and step into that situation, Father, and speak the truth so that another soul can be saved. Thank you, Father, for the service in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says amen and Amen. Family, have a fantastic week. Bring your world next week. Amen.